Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 75 of Lab Padre's SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. Here at Lab Padre, we're committed to bringing you the hard, cold facts. So let's dig in. Friday began with Starship 30's methane and forward sections being stacked onto its fourth commando section in the high bay. The ship's next fully assembled section, the four-ring midlock section that carries the forward root of the rear flaps, was moved into the high bay shortly after. Over at Massey's test site, the can crusher's ropes were installed around the hot staging ring test article. This can crusher will verify that this late addition to the stack will stand up in flight. The afternoon saw a new section of the under-construction Star Factory's roof lifted into place as the new permanent production facility for Starship continues its rapid build-out. Over at the tracking station, crews began dismantling the second dish, starting from the top and working their way down the antenna and its pointing systems. Turning the clock over from Friday to Saturday, Starship 28 was rolled out of Massey's down Highway 4 to the build site before coming to a stop at the Rocket Garden. Once the ship arrived, the LR-1750 and a pair of workers attached the shipload spreader to Starship 28 to lift the ship onto the on-site engine installation stand. As the sun rose over the launch site, Starship 25 was removed from the test stand B and placed on a transport stand ahead of the ship's planned return to the build site. Not much later, Ship 28 was lifted onto the engine installation stand to be readied for its static fire test campaign while it waits for a test window to open. Traveling by self-propelled modular transporters up Highway 4, the ship thrust simulator and its associated compressor hardware were brought to the ring yard. The fourth and final section of the fifth level of the new mega bay was lifted into place. Once the bracing is in place, the next step in construction will be adding the roof. With Starship 25 safely freestanding on the transport stand, the lifting hooks were removed from the ship. Back at the launch site, the Raptor igniters could be heard being tested on Booster 9. With the new Mega Bay's outer walls in place, crews began to prepare a counterweight tray for Buckner's LR-11000, ready in the crane to lift the building's rooftop trusses. Early on Sunday morning, Ship 25 was rolled out onto Highway 4 and relocated to the Rocket Garden, where it will undergo the remaining preparations for flight. Booster 9's biggest test campaign to date began a little before 8 a.m. with a test of the FireX detonation suppression system under the orbital launch mount. In a rehearsal of launch day activities, Booster 9's grid fins were tested, verifying that the range and behavior of the services were operating within spec. While test preparations continued, the thrust simulator stand, which was used to test Ship 28, was returned to Massey's test site. At 2.07 p.m., the countdown timer hit zero. Putting the deluge system to the test for the first time under the fire of Raptors, Booster 9's engines roared to life, burning for 2.74 seconds before an automatic abort was triggered by four of the engines shutting down early. After Booster 9's test, crews continued dismantling the second dish at the tracking station, removing the parabolic dish supports from the base. Early Monday morning, the booster transport stand was relocated at the launch site, parking next to the orbital launch mount. As dawn broke over Starbase, the booster quick disconnect was detached from Booster 9, readying the vehicle for departure from launch site. A few hours later, the chopsticks left the launch stowage position and were readied and relocated to the lifting hardpoints to take Booster 9 off the launch mount. Booster 9 was lifted off the orbital launch mount early in the afternoon, looking none the worse for wear as it was carefully placed on the booster transport stand over the course of four hours, ahead of its future rollback to the build site. Traveling by self-propelled modular transporters up Highway 4, Booster 9 made a quick return to the build site, arriving shortly before midnight and rolling into the Mega Bay for final outfitting just a few minutes into the new day. 
Additional components for a new reconfigured luffing jib, derrick, and counterweights for Buckner's LR-11000 began to arrive at the build site in the morning, with crews getting right to work for the new Mega Bay roof trusses. On Tuesday, a Versabar load spreader was delivered to the launch site ahead of the expected arrival of the Deluge System's third high-capacity water tank. SpaceX's LR-11000 was repositioned from the test stands to the orbital pad's deluge system and ready to lift the new water tank once it arrived. With a clear straight shot through the emptied ring yard, Buckner's LR-11000 was laid down on Wednesday morning for reconfiguration. A large amount of concrete was placed for the ongoing Star Factory expansion, widening the footprint of the factory floor ahead of the next phase of steelwork. Performing its second major assembly operation this week, Starship 30's assembled upper sections were stacked onto the mid-lock tank section in the high bay. Did I just say Starship 30? Late in the evening, and filling both lanes of Highway 4 in a specialized carrier rig, the third large deluge system water tank finished its long journey across the country and arrived at Starbase. On Thursday, after workers finished setting up the Versabar overnight, SpaceX's LR-11000 was ready to lift the new water tank out of the tank transport rig. The crane slowly picked up the weight of the new tank ahead of its placement within the orbital launch pad deluge system. The deluge tank was lifted into position and partially placed over its holding cradle by noon, but it would take some additional adjustments to ready the tank for its final placement. Over at Massey's, the Ship 26.1 test article was lifted onto the transporter and relocated to the burst testing area. Continuing the maintenance, repair, and fabrication work that has been underway since Tuesday, the work platform that lets crews access the inner ring area was raised under the orbital launch mount. This past Wednesday, we received some overhead images from RGV Aerial, giving us a bird's eye view of Starbase. Looking down on the Star Factory expansion, the heavy metal building and its other associated structures are nearing completion, while the foundation footing for the next phase of construction is coming along with just one quarter of the floor area waiting for concrete. Looking towards the second mega bay and the ring yard, we can see that the bay is almost ready to receive its bridge cranes, which were scheduled to arrive on Friday. The first of the rooftop trusses is being assembled on its side. Reconfiguration efforts with Buckner's LR-11000 were underway at this point, with the mostly assembled derrick near the crane's cab and the yet-to-be-assembled luffing jib components visible in the ring yard. The launch site stood up well to Booster 9's first static fire test, with no visible damage to the orbital launch mount or its supporting equipment. The primary steel plate was covered in a blue tarp at the time of the flyover, making it difficult to make a more detailed assessment, though. The Deluge water detention pond has done its job capturing much of the runoff from Sunday's test. Groundwork can still be seen in the propellant storage farm, where the foundations for what appears to be a further nine commodity storage tanks which are being readied. These tanks will replace the vertical storage tanks, which were damaged during the first integrated flight tests back in April. This week at the Cape saw Crosby Skipper return to port on Saturday with Just Read the Instructions and Falcon 9 Booster 1077 in tow, having successfully flown Galaxy 37 into orbit on August 2nd. Clearing space on the docks on Sunday, Falcon 9 Booster 1062 was laid onto the horizontal transporter for the return trip to Roberts Road. Late that evening, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 lifted off from SLC-40 on its fourth flight, launching the Starlink Group 6-8 mission and carrying its V-2 mini-satellites into orbit. Falcon 9 Booster 1077 was lifted onto the docks on Monday ahead of its own stowage and forthcoming return to Roberts Road. Tug Crosby Skipper departed Port Canaveral in the evening, towing Just Read the Instructions out to sea in support of Starlink Group 6-9, which would launch early on Friday morning. United Launch Alliance's rocket ship had a special delivery on Wednesday, pulling into Port Canaveral with the interim cryogenic propulsion stage for Artemis 3, which is scheduled to launch in 2025. Falcon 9 Booster 1077 finished its stay at the Port Canaveral docks and was laid onto the horizontal transporter later in the evening. 
The Tug Signet Titan returned to port with short fall of Gravitas and Falcon 9 Booster 1078 on Thursday after it successfully delivered Starlink Group 6-8 into orbit. Booster 1078 was soon lifted off the landing ship and had been placed onto the docks by noon. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.